So in the vise we have the Hanak H230 barbless hook, it's at size 14 and the thread we're going to be using today to tie this wet is the Vivas E1 and as you can see it's an 8 and it's black. Now I'm not going to treat the hook with any super glue and I'm not going to add any more wax to my thread and the reason for that is I don't want the, the colour of the thread to be tarnished with wax and or super glue. So I'm starting in just behind the eye and I'm going to use my rat's tail to get a nice even bed of thread down onto the shank of my hook. Just taking my time, there's no rush and I want to try and cover as much of the shank as I can. So I'm just going to remove my rat's tail with a pair of snips like so. And the next thing I'm going to do is add my rib. I'm going to use some of this Venyard's uh, French silver wire, it's number 27. And I do tie these with gold wire as well, and uh, it seems to work quite nicely. Uh, I don't get a chance to fish wet very often, which is a real shame because it can be a great fun way of fishing. Especially if you're unsure of what's rising, um, or what, sorry, what's coming off, you can obviously see rising fish. but when you're not sure what, what it is that the fish are coming up to, wets can often be the answer to just um, get a team of wets on and fish across and great fun. You don't always get um, a lot of fish to hook up rates, but you can have a lot of fun doing it. So I've caught my ribbon here. I've caught it all the way up the body on my side. Now the reason for that is it keeps the body um, nice and even. So I'm going to bring my rib round now and I want to try and keep my turns nice and even. And that seems to be going swimmingly. Just come back a little bit on that one. And then I can catch that in with my thread. Couple of turns. And then while keeping tension on the thread, I can simply twist my wire until it parts company with the fly. So, so far so good. Next, I'm going to add in a little thorax on this wet. And I'm just using, this is a peacock feather as you can see. Uh, I'm going to use one of the the lesser used feathers down at the bottom here. Now with peacock feathers the strength of the feather is at the bottom end but it's also the thickest bit of the stalk so I'm going to come up a ways so that I get the thinner piece here towards the the tip of the feather and I'm just going to snap that away. Now I want the thinner piece because it's obviously smaller and it just bends a lot better. So I'm going to come back now. I've brought my thread back around just under 5mm from the eye of the hook. So when I twist up my thorax now, I've got room for the thorax and obviously I've still got to get my hackle in. So I'll just get another one more turn then I can capture that in. Just taking my time. I'll get another turn over the actual herald and then I'm going to come in front of it. Keeping tension on the thread, grip your remainder and you can pull that away. So that's looking not too bad now. It's not, it's not my favourite wet fly, my favourite's uh, always going to be partridge and orange. Uh, but this is a, a, you can't just fish three partridge and oranges obviously, so I like to mix it up a little bit. And this is one of the flies that I would often use on the point with the partridge and orange above it. Now, for the hackling, I'm going to use partridge. I'm, I'm using a, a, a natural partridge cape and I've already selected a feather out of it. 
Uh, I've stripped away all the waste, as you can see at the bottom end, and I've got my feather at the top. Now, this is a, it's not what I'd call an ideal feather, but it's going to um, suit my purposes today. So, I'm going to grab my hackle pliers. I'll try and do this on camera, and I'm just going to grab the tip of the partridge feather, and I'm going to ease. I don't know how much of this is you're seeing on camera, actually. Um, because it might be out of focus but hopefully it's it's enough as you can see what I'm doing so I'm just using the hackle pliers to grab the spine and I've slicked all the feathers back so once I've done that I can remove my hackle pliers and catch in the tip of that feather now I'm just going to get two or three turns in and then come in with my snips and try and remove my waist without cutting my, my uh, hackle. Okay, so I've got my little handle here. Now, you'll get people arguing for Britain about how many turns. Some people will say you only need one turn. Others will argue that it should be a lot bushier. I kind of go for an, an in, I'm an in the middle sort of guy so I've got a turn and a half there just about and I'm just going to capture that in with a couple of turns like so now it looks a little bit messy at the moment but it'll all come good in a sec now the next thing I'm going to do is slick out all my stuff back so the stock everything get all the fibers back out the way of the eye and just get two or three turns in just to the start of your building of your head actually and once you've done that you can grab your handle keep tension on the thread and flick away now this has turned out a bit bushier than i'd expected actually but um, as i said people will argue that night's day um, about the hackles on wet flies so uh uh, I think they, they, they all have their time in the sun, is what I would say. So what I'm going to do next is just finish building my head and get a couple of half hitches in here. Just to be on the safe side, put another one in and again I'm going to come in with my snips and remove my thread. Now to finish this off, you can use uh, fly tires varnish or UV resin. I'm going to go for the latter. So I've got some Solaris bone dry here. And I've taken the majority of the, the resin off the brush because I just want the very slightest amount on the fly. So I'll just rotate my vise, make sure I capture all, all of the thread in, just for aesthetic purposes more than anything else because, you know, once the, the head's secure, I don't think the fish really care how much time you've taken with your shiny nice head. But uh, from a fly tires perspective, uh, you want to try and make it as neat as possible. And certainly when, uh, when I'm taking images of my flies with a macro lens, there's no escaping the detail. So, you know, I think it does help make you a better tire when you take some close-up pictures and have a look at your work. And you can pick out all the little imperfections on the fly. But that's a, a handy little wet, maybe not tied the traditional North Country way. But um, all, all the less, it's still very effective. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider clicking the button and turning the alarms on. And I'll see you all next time.